Well, a warm welcome to this talk. Now, I was down in London a couple of months ago and I took the opportunity to go to Soho and specifically in Soho to Broadwick Street. And those of you who are students of epidemiology will immediately realise that used to be called Broad Street and it was the site of the cholera pump identified by Dr John Snow. Let's have a look at some video I took there and then we'll look at some implications for the present day as well because we need to learn from history. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Well here we have it, John Snow's famous cholera pump. It was on Broad Street, it's now on Broadwick Street. This pump, of course, is a replica. I think it was put up in 2018 by the John Snow Appreciation Society. And they've also put uh, the name of a pub <laughs> after uh, Dr John Snow. Unfortunately, it was closed when I was there, so I couldn't check it out from the inside. But this is a replica of the pump, and it's in exactly the same position, exactly the same position as the original pump. And, of course, I was relieved to see that the handle uh, has still not been uh, replaced. We don't want uh, contaminated cholera water being pumped out the ground although I think the cesspits probably dried up a little bit by now now in 1854 this was the Broad Street cholera outbreak John Snow said this the most terrible outbreak of cholera which ever occurred in this kingdom and on the 31st of August and in the three days after the 31st of August there was 127 deaths in the immediate area the death toll eventually rising to 616 and interestingly, the people that were sick from this, a lot of them went to the Middlesex Hospital. And at the time, Florence Nightingale was in charge of nursing there and she nursed many of these patients personally. And some, due to her care, were uh, did recover, although some did sadly go on to die of shock and dehydration. Now, John Snow contacted the councillors of St. Parish, uh, St. James's Parish, and they agreed to take the handle off the pump so that people could no longer pump the contaminated water. And after this, the cholera epidemic started to, to uh, subside. It had, had been going down already anyway because people were leaving the area. But it's based on this map that he produced. He produced this afterwards and it's the first real map of epidemiology showing spatial correlations. Let's have a look at that now. So here is John Snow's 1854 cholera map. And as we go in, we see Broad Street here. This is Broad Street. And we can see the position of the pump just outside the pub. And these black bars you see here represent coffins or deaths. And we see that they cluster around about the cholera pump so we noticed that there was a spatial correlation from people getting their water from this pump that was next to a cesspit that was draining sewage into the collection area for the pump and he also noted of course that there was a brewery just down the street and the brewery workers weren't drinking the water because the brewery workers drank mostly what's called small beer. This is beer with about a half percent or maybe one percent alcohol content. But the key thing is it, the water was boiled in the preparation of the beer, so they didn't get it. But this is the famous map generated by John Snow in 1854. And for this is rightly called the founding father of epidemiology. Well, of course, there's a lot more detail we could add to this. For example, he looked at the seething wells water supply, which was taken from water upriver, up from the River Thames, nearer its source. And he compared that to the water supply taken lower down in the city from South Walk and uh, Vauxhall which was more contaminated. And he noticed that the South Wark and Vauxhall supplied households had 14 times the rate of cholera mortality compared to the seething wells households. So just looking at basic information, doing a fairly simple analysis on it and finding out that you're 14 times more likely to die depending on your water supply. 
And of course, there's so many modern things where the same thinking can be applied and occasionally is applied. Now, of course, there's so many things that we can learn from this that apply to the present day. And the first thing I want to consider is uh, why did John Snow succeed when others failed? He wanted to keep his patients alive and well. He was passionate about his work. He was passionate about human life. I think that was a big reason why he succeeded. He was distraught by the suffering and death he worked amongst. Now, if you read his writings, you can see that the guy was really suffering with his, pa with his patients. He was in the area. He knew the smells. He could hear the sound of the bereaved relatives. He knew what it was like to be in this suffering and he fought against it with everything he had in his being. This is the level of commitment that, that we need in all times, especially today. He was motivated by a concern for his people. He had a good understanding of the science of his day, which of course is important. He was an advocate of germ theory as opposed to miasma theory. And it's often said that fortune favours the prepared mind. So we still need to do our homework. He realised prevention was better than cure. I mean, what a simple principle. Why don't we stop these people dying <laughs> rather than uh, treat them when they get sick? Because by the time someone had uh, cholera, they were often very dehydrated. The, the stool just runs out like water. People, people become dehydrated, fluid and electrolyte imbalance, hypovolemic shock and death can occur really quite quickly, especially in children. Terrible, uh, terrible disease. And at that time, they wouldn't have the ability to rehydrate and fluid resuscitate as we have uh, today. Although still, cholera is a remarkably dangerous disease today. Um, realistic lifestyle choices. Realise that lifestyle choices are critical for health. The water that you drink, where you get your water supply is critical. Who else was involved? Um, now, the, uh, the population of patients accepted his medical opinion. So the patients respected what their doctor told them. And the local authorities shared a concern for the population under their charge. They took seriously their duty of care. So we had a situation in St. James's Parish, in Soho, in that area, in 1854, where the, government, the local government, the parish council, cared deeply for the well-being of its citizens and followed the advice of their respected medical leader. Is that always the case today, I hear you ask? Right, let's make some, some of my observations about this case. Um, widespread ignorance made uh, disease essentially inevitable. So yes, the conditions were appalling, but the main, uh, condition, the main problem arguably was ignorance. If you can keep people in ignorance, um, they're more controllable, aren't they? But these people were ignorant of what was causing this. Is ignorance a problem today? Let me know what you think. No money was made when he removed the pump handle. It was motivated by concern for humanity and the science. So no money was made. Uh, would this still be the case today or is money more important? Taking the pump off the handle cost nothing. It was free to do. It was a free intervention. No vested interest opposed his work. No one tried to actively suppress the new discovery. So here's a new idea. No one said, oh, this is a new idea. This could save lives. Better hush this up. Um, because really what we want to be doing is selling people, I don't know, cures or something like that. You know, if, if people are, uh, if you take the pump off the handle and you stop people getting sick, could be a good wasted business opportunity potentially. So anyway, that didn't happen. I'm pleased to say there was no well-funded, well-connected, powerful vested interests opposing his work. Therefore, his work went ahead. He was heard. No international organisations opposed his work or tried to suppress, suppress his findings. That didn't happen, thankfully. Corporate and national interests did not make money from uh, the intervention, but they supported it anyway. So the local government and the local businesses supported what he was doing anyway despite the fact they weren't making money from it. 
work was not opposed by powerful rich individuals so there was no uh, millionaires coming round trying to interfere with John Snow's work he was free to investigate he was free to collect the data he was free to publish the data without any obstruction uh, no one called what he was doing harmful misinformation and he didn't receive death threats life-saving discovery was not suppressed by national regulatory bodies in fact the national bodies supported him so there was no suppression of information by national regulatory bodies national and international bodies did not claim there was insufficient data and insist on a multi-million dollar randomized controlled trial you really think this works dr snow well, well come 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 we need a randomized double blind control trial on this it's going to cost us 20 million dollars we need at least a thousand people in it and we're going to need some professionals to organize it you get out of the way you bumbling amateur it didn't happen so he succeeded lives were saved so no one insisted on silly amounts of further data publishers helped to distribute the new knowledge so this was in the newspapers it was lauded it was published it was spread abroad literally abroad throughout the uk and throughout the world and uh people who'd never heard of england and all london benefited from this discovery absolutely brilliant no one opposed no, no one used oppressive censorship to silence him so it wasn't oppressed by censorship he was allowed to speak freely he was not deplatformed by media organizations wonderful he and his ideas were not personally attacked by the legacy media they promoted his work the helpful intervention was not opposed by people who could make money from the sick relevant publications were not written by people who could make money from selling cures or vaccines this simply didn't happen counter argument was accepted and adjudicated by the evidence now there is uh, famous cases of people who debated with john snow who, who was in favor of germ theory other people believe the miasma theory which is uh, the disease is caused by bad air that's where we get the term mal area from um, but quite a few people because of john snow's reasoning and science and evidence changed their mind they changed their mind they said you know what john i used to believe in miasma theory but because of the evidence you've given me i now realize that germ theory is correct i'm going to change my mind i'm going to change my mind because you have presented me with evidence this is what we have to be prepared to do follow the evidence wherever it leads so counter argument was accepted there was no uh, this is my position and i'm sticking to it mate the principle of disease mapping went on to save millions of lives and still is today of course taking the pump off the handle became a common expression so these days for example if you want to when we wanted to prevent lung cancer by telling people to stop smoking that would be taking the handle off the pump now there's lots of pumps today with lots of handles we need to take lots of handles off lots of pumps today let me know what pumps you think these are and what the handles might represent i can think of lots and lots of examples but i don't want this video to last forever finally uh would he be able to succeed today uh let me think about that one uh, i've thought about that one no i don't think he would for all these reasons that were mentioned because right now in london i can think of half a dozen brilliant doctors and scientists whose work is not listened to in england in the united states i've talked to famous doctors scientists statisticians biochemists all around the world whose work is simply not listened to 
there are many pumps still pumping out water contaminated by cholera. We need to identify the pumps, identify what the handle is, remove the handle and take away or at least massively reduce the human pain, suffering and death caused by that contaminated water. In memory of Dr John Snow, 1813 to 1858.